and you can't simply remove those ending joints or else you lose the deformer. So what we'll have to do here it's just double click one of those bones starting from the tip always go from the tip to the root so that it makes things easier and just assign the proper weight map. Since we have assigned skeleton bone 8 here which is as you can see the head bone and this one will be let me just lock the geometry for a second okay and this one will take the previous weight which is as a matter of fact skeleton bone 7 so we're gonna offset those weights so this one is skeleton bone 6 skeleton bone 6 is gonna take the skeleton bone 5 weight and so on and so forth also bear in mind that uh, if you check in the size scene you will notice that when you have offset bones like this for instance this part of the spine and this bone here it's a child of it you notice there's an offset there's no direct connection yet light waves joints as any joint systems they are all connected so it does create a deformer connecting this kind of um, structure or hierarchy so what you have to do in this case is simply disabling these bones like this okay so let me open the scene with everything already set so you check out how it ends up and here you can see that everything works just as expected notice that with this procedure I'm not just using explicit weights I'm using explicit weights on top of the procedural weighting system of light waves if you check one of these joints you can see that it's not using the use weight map only option which makes it explicit and that means that light wave has some influence control just like as you have some influence control over the strength or additional blending of those joints which gives you an extra layer of control a very welcome layer of control in fact another advantage that you get from light wave is setting up IK booster like I said initially so let's open a scene here using IK booster you can define your IK rig on the fly for instance I can entering into IK boost mode I can both define a uh, pose and IK pose using just the arm or both the arm and the clavicle just by defining how much I want the IK stop to work for instance here I'm working just with the arm but as you can see some deformations with the shoulder aren't perfect but I can also uh, by simply untoggling the IK stop and having another one set here like I have right now I can then use the clavicle to pull the, the whole arm system much better than what, what you can without using it and all that without losing the capacity to actually uh, use the regular rotation so it's both IK and FK at the same time a great system definitely Okay, so with that, we conclude our little light wave incursion. So let's get to Unity integration. So I've got Unity running here already, and with this project setup, you're gonna see this one is pretty quick and easy. So let's first create a new project from start. Uh, I select our standard folder and create a new directory, a new folder. Let's call it Messiah Unity. Okay, so selecting the empty folder, just click here. If you want to import some of the standard packages, that's the time to do it. Pretty obvious. Just hit create. Unity will reboot. And you've got your empty scene here. So, what we want to do is make 
the FPX file available here in the project so we can drag it inside our scene. To do that, one of the easiest ways is simply go to Windows Explorer, select the file you want to make available in the Unity scene, go to the Assets folder inside your main project folder and just paste the file. Everything which is inside Assets shows here in the project window inside Unity. Okay, so once you do that, the next thing is simply selecting Unity and waiting for the file to import because that's what it's doing. You see it has generated one material, which as I said previously, it's the only material that you get from any Messiah exported FPX. And you can see here the same structure that you've created inside Messiah. Okay, so where are the import settings? Click on the root FPX file and then you see the import settings with a preview right here. And you can see that it has imported the morph targets or blend shapes as separate objects. So you might want to go through an extra step before bringing it inside Unity to clean up all that. Or you can clean up unintended morph targets inside Unity, whatever you prefer. As for the actual settings, just leave them as standard scale factor, generation of normals, tangents, okay, just don't touch anything, it's just fine. As long as you use meters in your source 3D application, this is definitely the best side. Okay, so right now inside the scene, all we have is the main camera. To bring in the butch object, all we have to do is select its relevant file and just drop inside the scene, and you see that it it's instantly made available inside the scene. So it's obviously not visible right now. Why is that? You're just too far away. Hit F and you see that you be able to fit the object inside the scene view, All right? This is actually an instance from the project item, which we can, of course, edit. In our case, we're searching for the V cluster guys. So let's just select it, hit delete. It's gonna lose the prefab connection, fine, thank you. And now you can see just the animated mesh. So what now? The animation is already properly applied. As we can see here, it has imported an animation with the standard name of take one. And it is set to play automatically, which means that once we hit play, we'll see the animation playing here. Excellent, so this is just the perspective view. Now, to use the camera which was set inside Messiah and get its view straight from the game view, it's a pretty simple process. Let's first get out of play mode or else any changes won't be actually committed to the theme. Let's now select the main camera, make sure its position is all set to zero, which is not right now. Main camera is the one which is getting its viewpoint handled here, right? And now let's find the, the proper object which was imported from Saya. As you can see, we have a camera unit guy here. And this being the last child of the root, that's the one which is going to be the parent of our actual main camera inside Unity. You can notice that we're still not seeing the object in our game view. So let's check this out. If you select the camera now and butch 0 1 at the same time and hit F, you can actually see what's going on, okay? To organize that, you generally make sure that everything is as close to the zero position as possible to prevent unwanted hierarchical stacked translations and rotations. Okay, so let's check everything up. This is actually the position imported from the inside scene. You can notice that there's a huge offset in the y-axis, which is certainly a result of the new position which got inherited once we reparented the camera. So let's just zero everything out, let's zero out the rotations as well and see the result. Okay, now the camera it's in its proper placement, but we shouldn't have the perfect rotation. Simple fix, just select the camera unit object and remove the 90 degrees pitch rotation. 
And as you can see, the object is finally showing up. It's still not very good, but at least the angle is proper. So let's check the main camera attributes. Let's make the field of view the same as inside Messiah 20. You can see the arm. Now let's add a light. To light up our scene. Let's reduce a bit the intensity of the light. Something less blown up. And finally let's fix the camera near click and plane, which is way too intense and it's chopping off our model. And that's it. It's done. Now as you hit play, you can see the, the exact same angle and the animation all flawlessly imported from the side. Let's stop the animation. Save the scene as something we can use, like Messiah Unity Test. Final touch, adding a black background, make things more visible. And that's it. You can add extra lights, color lights. It's all very easy to click and play inside Unity. All up to you. Remember that Messiah is a full-blown application. It's not just uh, an animation generator or deformation generator software, although it's probably one of the best in the market for those applications, if not the best. But it's got particles, hair, and all those goodies so that you can actually render and finish your whole project on Messiah Messiah. But if you want to integrate it to your pipeline or if you want to use a real-time engine like Unity or integrate it to your other 3D programs, you're perfectly fine to do so. And that's what I've tried to showcase in this tutorial. Okay, so have fun, enjoy Messiah, be happy. Bye-bye.